is old news. Everybody and their grandfather went looking for that. When our parents were our age, I mean, I mean, haven't you ever heard of that guy? What, what's his name? The pirate guy. One-Eyed Willie. It was such a profound experience. It was my first time on film. I had never done anything before that, that I thought that's how everything was, and I was wrong. Goonies was one of, still stands, as one of the greatest experiences of my life. What was your fondest memory from making that film? Probably being backed into the stage where the ship was that they kept us away from. There was security outside the stage. We spent probably three months trying to get into the stage, figuring out ways we could see it before they wanted to show it to us. Backed us into the stage. They put us underwater. They had speakers underwater. They had cameras ready. They wanted us to come up and they wanted real reactions when we looked at the ship for the first time. And I think I said either the F word or some. I just ruined the take. Because <laughs> I turned around and was like, <laughs> they were like, what? You're a goonie, you can't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was special. There's also been talks of like a sequel in the future. So yeah. I wonder how do you feel about that potentially happening? Personally? Uh, why? Do you know what I mean? I don't, like, it's, it, the movie exists in a really wonderful way, generation after generation, and I get to see that I just got a text the other day of a guy who had showed his daughter, and then he kind of regressed into seeing it for the first time. It's so wonderful. I mean, it's such a wonderful thing that exists that you get to see um, affect people. I know that, that Spielberg had a couple of scripts, and Chris Columbus had a couple of scripts, but they didn't feel that they were good enough. And now it's not far enough away that I don't know if it would ever happen. Uh, no, sir, I'm a veteran. Ma'am? Uh, yes, sir, two tours. What outfit? 12th Infantry Battalion, uh, August 7, 1966, July 2nd, 1968. I mean, Javier was incredible, incredible. He was really depressed during that time, though. You know what I mean? It was, a, it was, I mean, he says it. He goes, you know, I don't like violence, I don't drive. And there was one other thing. I don't drive, I don't like violence, and, my, and his haircut. You know, and uh, and I remember I would go to his apartment and be like, "Let's go out," and he'd be like, "No, I don't want to go out." And I was immediately so there was a lot of coercing during that time. But um, I love him. I continue to love him. We stayed friends. The first scene that we ever had was actually in Dune recently, together. Um, and the Coens, I ended up doing two other movies with the Coens and and maybe more. So I don't. Yeah, it was a profound moment in my professional existence that, uh, that I'm very appreciative of. 2007, I feel like, was a big year for you because you had No Country for Old Men, American Gangster, Grindhouse, you know, so many great movies in that time. Mm -hmm. I wondered, how did it feel to be like the it actor at that moment? I don't know if that's how I looked at it. I just was happy. I wasn't making any money, so that was, you know, it, that hadn't changed, but I was doing role. I think people were so confused why I got No Country that other directors were like, yeah, I want him too then. <laughs> Give me a role. I still had to read for American Gangster. I read for American Gangster after an all night shoot on No Country and, I, and, and my son played Denzel at, part, at 16. And, and then I sent that in on like iMovie or something. <laughs> So, I, I, you know, it was still a chore, and, but um, doing those, I mean, they were incredible. I'm working with Denzel and working with Russell and working with Ridley Scott and then working with Paul Haggis at the time and then working with Robert Rodriguez before that. Not that it was the only time that it happened. There's other times things like that bulks have happened that are really special, but that was definitely the first other than the Goonies. Things that just don't happen to people. It's not lost on me. Society can't exist without the family. We're not against that. Can two men reproduce? No, but God knows we keep trying. I think telling any story that puts a mirror up to society and current events is always important. However, I mean, this, you can, you can parallel it with this, with the abuse of power and all this kind of stuff. That's the whole point of storytelling. It's the whole point of poetry. It's the whole point of movie making. That's why I thought of milk yesterday, like literally just lying in bed. It just hit me about it being, Sean Penn's probably greatest performance, 
and how he allowed himself to become so vulnerable knowing him personally. It was an amazing kind of transformation and I thought he represented really well. I thought I represented well in that kind of awfulness of what a man is and you know, the, the kind of evil that exists and not wanting to think outside your own paradigm that you're used to or what people tell you is appropriate. Yeah, anytime we can go against that, I'm all for it. And obviously you got an Oscar nomination at the time for it as well. You lost out to Heath Ledger at the time, of course, but I wonder what was that experience like? Being nominated was amazing, but I knew, I knew Heath, you know, so that was, it hit a, it, me, all of us so profoundly that the, it wasn't about like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was, that is exactly what should have happened and his parents getting up there, his dad getting up there and, you know what I mean? It, it went exactly, yeah. So I was happy, it was me, somebody just said it the other day, it was me, Michael Shannon, Downey, and Heath. Was there somebody else? There was one. Philip Seymour Hoffman, was it? Okay, so, like all people I, I've known for a very, very long time. So it was such a great kind of family to be supportive of what was very um, obviously Heath's. Not because he died, because it was one of the most incredible performances ever. Which I also think about Joaquin when he did Joker. I think that's one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. How are you doing there? What's happening to me? I'm afraid you're dead, friend. How can you speak to me? Well, it's kind of a knack I picked up when I near died myself. It's funny because, you know, I've always spoken about it in a way that I think is disrespectful to the director. I don't think it was the director's fault. I think he did his best. I think it was a piece of film, but for many different reasons. And, um, <laughs> and I'm included in that too. <laughs> um, but, you know, we can't win them all. It happens. I think, I, I, I mean, I brought in a lot of really good people. I brought in Malkovich, I brought in Megan, I brought in Fassbender, who hadn't really hit yet. He'd done some great work, but he hadn't really hit yet. So I feel, I brought in Michael Shannon, but he was cut out. Um, yeah, man. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but it happened, you know? Just careened a little bit, hit a couple cars. Everybody survived. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. But I don't think it was Jimmy Hayward's fault. I think that's a misconception. You know, he was a big Jonah Hex fan. We gave him a shot. He directed a pretty good movie. And then the studio took it and made it a much worse movie. I've seen that happen a couple of times. You know, where they think what the, even once you get into pandering, what you think the audience wants based on a cosmetic, you know, I don't know. Uh, understanding or at least a, a, a pretend understanding of what you think an audience wants which nobody ever knows that's why it's good people like him where you just do the movie that's most powerful to you and then release it and hope for the best what's our objective to dramatically overreact we tweaked that that story a lot we rewrote a lot of stuff and and Taylor's uh, Sheridan had written that script and it was a really good script. He wrote a really good script But just because of the nature of, of what we were doing and where we were we just tweaked it. And it was a very Incredible uh, collaboration, you know, so yeah, and then Denny and I just became fast friends and we work well together And we have fun together personally and just an easy thing with him. Speaking of Denis, you first worked with him on Sicario mm -hmm. which is a Wonderful movie. Um, I wonder, you know what did you feel at the time set him apart as a director? Well, I said no to Sicario because it was a tiny, tiny part. And he, did, and he said something that I've heard directors say that I've never believed. It's, just, it's always proven to be untrue, which is we're going to grow this part. So if you just say yes, you'll be happy that you did it. But he, it was true with him. Everything I heard about myself, he taught me. And in doing so, made you the fiercest woman in the galaxy. That's why I trusted you to find the soul stone. It's funny when you start, you, you get into like a humility thing and you deny and you go, oh no, no. But the truth of the matter is, is when you, when you do something 
that is, and not just because of me, one note, you know what I mean? I came in with a certain idea and then the Russos maybe had, or complemented that with a contrasting idea. And I was like, oh, why don't you incorporate a little of this and this, that and that. So you don't know how it's gonna turn out, you know? It's all kind of new and a big experiment to everybody, including myself, but then also to Kevin Feige and also the Russos. And they have big hopes and, th and then it comes out and it works and people are moved by the character as opposed to just, oh, it's a great bad guy. And it was like Darth Vader was kind of the same thing with Star Wars. It was like there was something that made you lean into him, even though you know you hated him and what he represented was bad. There was something super attractive about him and you never saw his face, you know? And then you're looking at this guy who's a, you know, 700 pound purple dude but there was something very human about him. It was great. I thought they did an incredible job. I wonder, is that kind of time behind you now in terms of Marvel? Do you just feel like that's, you're done with that, that part? I feel that about everything I've ever done, you know, professionally. Sicario and then C Soldado showed up and then you do that. And, and then you'd, even, even though I know they were doing two movies, even we were focused on Infinity War and then it was like, oh yeah, we have Endgame. And, all that, or Dune and Dune 2. It's the same kind of thing. Um, Deadpool is the only one that when we finished Deadpool, I was like, yeah, that's, I think that's gonna stand by itself, Deadpool 2, um, with me, I'm saying. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think about it in those terms of like this thing, I'm very isolated. It's like how Denis thinks about this. I don't wanna talk about three. I just wanna do two. <laughs> I have you. Hi. But look down, my lord. You to join me in death. I see you found the mood. Yeah, I was a fan of Timothy's. I had seen him in a few different things, and um, I th I just super raw talent, super raw. You know, a lot of times you say, "Oh, I'd seen his work," but you hadn't really seen his work. Like I was a big fan of his already. And um, the idea of doing something bigger, I think he was more in awe of, and I think he was, you know, vulnerable about. And you know, come up and like, how do you do this? And like, well, what's the difference? And there is no difference. And no way, well, really? Um, but I was excited to work with him like I was excited to work with Austin, even though it continued with Timothy, with Austin and Florence. And when you see new actors, you know, it, it, there's definitely a judgment be, having been around for a while, of like, are you the real deal? Like, are you? <laughs> you just want to be famous? Is that your deal? <laughs> and then you, <laughs> and then you see people, kind of like what Paul's going through in the movie. You know, with their with their ability or inability to confront themselves. Everybody was incredible. I have a lot of respect for everybody. I remember that Austin. They were like, Have you Have you met Austin? Oh, you're gonna love him. Have you met Austin? Another person, another person, another person, another person, and then finally I'm like, ah, oh, I gotta meet this guy. Like, and I, and a, like weeks went by and I hadn't met him, and then finally our trailers were next to each other when we were still in Budapest, and I knocked on his door and opened. He opened the door, and this, I was met with this pasty bald guy with no eyebrows, and uh, big smile on his face. Hey, man, hey. And that was a three hour conversation. It was just easy from the first words out. It talked about our mothers and talked about all kinds of things. And, you know, and then I saw his work ethic on top of it. Just fell in love. Guy was never stopped working, never stopped. You could tell he was like off thinking about scenes or he was doing moves to the fight scene that he had to do. And I just appreciate that kind of work ethic. You don't see it always. Obviously you've worked with Denis a few times now. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like you've both grown together in these films? I've definitely seen him grow. And as he continues to challenge himself and his imagination, the financial aspects of the movies that he chooses to do and the, and the meaning, the size of the stories, and he's able to meet those challenges with his talent and his childlike nature without losing that. I think is what makes him super special. He pushes the ceiling. He's constantly pushing the ceiling. You look at Sicario, I love Sicario as much as I love Dune for what it is. 
But then you see Dune, and it's just much bigger. But he treated it, he treated Dune exactly like he treated Sicario, with the, with the amount, you know, the level of care was the same. So the, the care hasn't changed, but the talent has grown. The ability has grown.